ruhina wa fiyya'ati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudillala wa man yudli fala hadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahu bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin ya ayyuhal ladhina amadu attaqullaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اعزائي brothers and sisters Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Once again, uh, in this afternoon of the 20th of Jumaat uh, Sania, the Hijra year of 1438, corresponding to the 19th of March uh, of the year 2017 of the Gregorian calendar. Uh, you asked me to speak on establishment of prayer timing and moon sightings in Islam. Uh, this is uh, a topic uh, that is actually a pet topic, a topic of jurisprudence. Uh, so I will speak on, before speaking, uh, I will mention maybe definition. The first definition is a sabbath, the second one a shaf, the third one al -mania. What do the ulama mean when they mention these? A sabbath is the cause. Cause, when you say a sabbath or sabbath, cause and effect. The cause, a sabbath, is the force that brings about something into being. But what the Fukaha, the Jews, what they find is, is Ma'elzam min wujudi il wujud wa min adami il adam lidaki. Ma'elzam min wujudi il wujud wa min adami il adam lidaki. A force is that which, when it exists, then the effect must exist. And when it does not exist, the effect must not exist by its own self, by its own intrinsic self. The second one is a sham, that is a condition, a stipulated condition. This one, they say, Ma'elzam min wujudi il wujud wa la yelzam min adamihi wujudun wa la adam. Is that which, when it exists, then this, uh, the effect of the condition must exist. But when it does not exist, it will not lead to the existence or non-existence of what that stipulation was there for. And money is the opposite. For you to understand it, you will understand it with examples. It's better. Let's take prayer. What is the cause of a prayer? The cause, the suburb for a prayer is the time of prayer. What is salah? When the time of, of prayer comes, you have to pray. And when the time of prayer does not come, even if you pray, there is no prayer. And regarding prayer, sham is wudu, to have ablution. Yelzam, uh, sorry, I, sham, uh, uh, 
if there is no evolution, you can't pray. There is no prayer. But if there is evolution, there can be prayer, there can be no prayer. Because you can make evolution to recite the Quran, not to pray. So making evolution is a condition for the validity of prayer. But it's not a cause of prayer. Because you can uh, even, uh, uh, because of the cause, when there is, uh, it has to be there for you to do the, for the effect to appear, to exist. Like the time of prayer. It has to enter for the prayer to be valid. And if it does not enter the prayer, it will be But not the same with wudu, with ablution. If there is no ablution, there is no prayer. But it doesn't mean if you have ablution, you have to pray. If you have ablution, you don't have to pray. You can have ablution and just sit, because it's not the time for prayer. And the opposite is almani. The mani is when it, uh, when it, when it exists, then the effect does not exist. But when it is not existent, then the effect is exist to be non existent. Like menstrual period. When it is there, there can be no prayer. Even if a woman wants to pray, she can pray. But when it does not exist, there may be prayer, there may not be prayer. Because if a woman is pure and it is not time for prayer, she doesn't have to pray. Now, why I mention this is because these are what are called judgments that are tied to, uh, uh, to external factors. You are not compelled to bring them into existence. For instance, you are not compelled to bring the time of prayer into existence. You don't have control over it, but when it comes, then the Sharia takes effect. So the times of prayer, they are what are called as far. That is, when they exist, the prayer exists, and when they don't exist, the prayer does not exist. Allah Taala set the time for prayer, as He set the time for fasting. But there is difference between the two which is what I will explain in the, first, in the beginning. Allah in the Quran, He mentioned the times of prayer in different verses. Among the most comprehensive mentioning is the one in Surah Al-Rum. Subhanallah, hina tumsuna wa hina tusbiqun. Walamu alhamdu fi samawati wal abdi wa ashiyan wa hina tuhdiru. He said, Subhanallah, that is praise be to Allah, that is tasbih. That is, uh, here is reference to prayer, because prayer is called subha, tasbih. That is why the, uh, the prayer of duha is called subha to duha, because the import, uh, tasbih is one of the most important elements in prayer. You do it in every ruku, you do it in every sujud. So his Allah says, for subhanallah, that is pray, hina sunsuna. When you enter the evening time, al masah in a tumsuna, is meant here. Uh, uh, here, what is meant is al uh, al maghrib and al isha. And other people they say in a tumsuna is meant al asr, but al masah is it, 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 uh, it is covered. And when you are going into the, uh, the time of Duhu, which is after the sun has passed the tent. Uh, that is when you go into the morning, that is the early morning, that is the Fajr prayer. So, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. And to him belongs the praise in the heavens and in the earth. At the time of the evening, and here it's reference to Al-Asr. 
Gideon were in the two Peru and during the time of Zohar, when you go into the time of Zohar. So all the five daily prayers have been mentioned in this time. And also Allah says, Aqidu salata lidulubi shamsi ila bakar bilay wa Qur'an al-Fajr. In the Qur'an al-Fajr, he can be put. Establish prayer when the sun tilts, that is from the zenith, ila bakar bilay, to the time when darkness falls. Now it, 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 it comprises the four prayers, al-Dhuhr, al-Asr, al-Masr. Because it says from the time the sun tilts, till the darkness falls, which brings all the other four prayers. Wa Qur'an al-Fajr, and the recitation of the Qur'an during the Fajr prayer, which is the Fajr prayer. In a more explicit manner, the description came from the Prophet وسلم, and the famous hadith is the hadith of uh, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, which is the first hadith in al muwatta of Imam Mali, that Jibreel alayhi salam, he came down during the time of Zuhr, when the sun was at the zenith, and he prayed with the Prophet Then he came when the length of the shadow was equal to the length uh, to the height of a person. Then he prayed Asr. Then he came when the sun had set and he prayed Maghrib. Then he came when the, the redness, a shabbat, when it had appeared and he prayed Isha. Then he came at the beginning, at the appearance of dawn and he prayed Fajr with him. Then the following day, he came for Zuhr prayer at the time when he came for Asr to be there. Then he came uh, for Asr prayer when the length of the shadow was double the height of a person. Then he came for Maghrib at the same time that he came for Maghrib the previous day. Then he came for Isha at the end of what part of the night. And he came for Fajr prayer the second day when the, sun, when the whole of horizon was bright. But it was not up, it was not sunrise yet. And he said, Ma bayna hazeni wa. What is between these two is the time. Now notice, what we notice here is that prayer has been tied to the motion of the sun. Is it to the movement of the sun? All the prayer signs are tied to the movement of the sun. But regarding fasting, Allah Taala says, "Faman shahida min kum shahara falisum." Whoever is present when the when the when the month when the month uh, uh, when uh, whoever is present and settled in the month at the beginning of the month he should fast. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this. He said, "Sumu li rubiyatihi wa afiru li rubiyatihi." Start fasting when you see the month, when you see the new moon, and stop fasting when you see the crescent, the new moon. Here, the uh, do you notice any difference between the suburb of fasting and the suburb of prayer? Can anybody, has anybody noticed any difference between the two? Huh? Yes, what is the difference between the two? Movement of the crescent. Okay, lunar solar. Any other difference? There are times. No, I want the difference. I don't want the similarity. I want the difference. Our sisters, anybody observe any difference? Between the command, between the time for prayer and the time to start the fast? Yes. Uh-huh. 
heard. This is it. This is the difference. For prayer, it is the actual time. The timing is tied to the motion of the sun. But for fasting, it is tied to our dream tradition. If we see, it is not tied to the movement of the moon itself. It didn't say, start fasting when the moon is born, when the crescent is born. But it said, when it is seen in the naked eye. So even if it was born, but it was not seen, you cannot fast with your seeing. But when it is the zenith, when it is the one, whether you are, when it is, uh, when it is the one, whether you have seen the one or you have not seen the one, it does not change that it is the time for you. The moment you establish that it is the one, you have to fight, you have to pray. Whether it is visible to the naked eye or it is not visible. The moment the sun sets, you have to pray mother. Whether it is visible to the naked eye or it is not visible to the naked eye. Because the Sabbath there is tied to the motion of the sun. And Allah Ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, he has said that both the movement of the sun and the movement of the moon, they are going on a calculated pattern. As shamsu wal qamaru The sun and the moon, they are on a calculated path, calculated motion. And he said, Who are the Jah al Shams of the Yah and Wal Kamara Nuru Wa Kadjara Manaj? He is the one who made the, the sun a source of light. Wal Kamara Nura and the moon a reflector of light. Wa Kadjara Manaj. And he measured it and placed it into stages. He said, Allah added a Sinina Wal Isa. So that you know the number of years and you know calculations. So, based on this, Imam al qarazi in his book al quruq that is the book of differences, that is the meaning of the book. In, the, in difference number 102, al barqul al-Mi'a, what is name? He said, there is consensus that the times of prayer can be established using calculation. There is consensus, no difference of opinion, that you can set the time of prayer based on astronomical calculations. But regarding the uh, the sighting uh, uh, the of the moon, you cannot set it by calculations by the preponderance of the opinion of the ulama, with the exception of some ulama of Malikia and some ulama of Shafi'iyah who also say you can establish the beginning of the moon through calculation. But this position is not acceptable because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Inna ummatun ummiya. We are an unlettered community. La natubu wa la We don't try, we don't make calculation. Al shahru haqqada wa haqqada wa haqqada. The moon, a moon, is like this, like this, like this, and it indicated 29 days. So this is the difference between the two. Why is it that it is possible to establish, it is, uh, it is a consensus to establish the time of prayer by calculation, but to establish the appearance of the moon, the beginning of Ramadan by calculation is not acceptable. Why do we find the difference between the two? The first one, Allah Ta'ala ties the cause to an existential event that could be calculated, which is the movement of the sun. The movement of the sun. It is all describing when the sun arrives at such a position to this, when it arrives at such a position to this. So any way that you can have that knowledge is acceptable, including astronomical calculations. This is why there is no difference of but regarding sighting the moon, the crescent, he tied it not to the actual appearance of the moon, not to the actual creation or existence of the moon on, in, in, in the horizon, but to visual ability. 
if it is seen. And this is something that is subjective, isn't it? What someone can see, another may not see. And he did not say everyone has to see him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained how the seeing, how the witnessing can be established. Even if a single witness who is trustworthy, if he sees the one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has accepted such a witness. Even though it's not the opinion of Mali. Mali people, there has to be two witnesses at least. But according to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, when people look for the new moon, and uh, a baby in Arab came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said he saw the moon, said, you believe in la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said yes. Then he said, he asked, he made, uh, he asked Bilal to announce for people the following day. Uh, sorry, to come to the, uh, the following day, to come to the uh, Eid prayer uh, because for Shawwal. So even the witness, even if one person declares a witness, it will be accepted. You don't have, it doesn't have to mean that each and every person has to see. So based on this, the, uh, the ulama, Generally, they followed the times of this prayer, which uh, who, uh, uh, they have been following these times, and they use several methods to determine the way to establish the times of prayer. The most crucial uh, are two, which is. Uh, and actually they, uh, they tend to become three. The first one is the time of Dhuhr. And the second one is the time of Isha. The time of Dhuhr is tied to Zawal. That is when the sun reaches the zenith. And in determining what is how to realize the zenith, they have different ways of doing that calculation. Some of them, they, uh, they make use of, uh, they make use of dividing the whole movement of the sun into 360, because the sun goes round, uh, the, uh, the earth goes round, uh, rotates on its axis 360 degrees. So they say, from the time the sun rises today till the time it rises tomorrow, it covers 360 degrees. So they divide the phases of the sun into units, into degrees. And they identify a degree for each time. From that, they are able to find out the time when the sun is at its center. Another way which they used to do it earlier is through using uh, shadows. Because when the sun rises, the shadow extends to the west. And then it, 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 it starts reducing with the rise of the sun in the sky. The shadow reduce, reduces till it reaches a point when it is at its minimum level. Then it starts increasing by the sun tilting away from the zenith, it starts to increase. At the point where the shadow is at its lowest, at its uh, uh, shortest position, and it is almost static, neither increasing nor decreasing, that is the zenith, that is the one. So normally, uh, they mentioned in some of the books, I remember several years back I did it, they say, you, uh, you, you dig a stick and make sure it is perpendicular, it is upright. Make sure it is perpendicular to a flat surface. And then you start uh, after every, after a number, after like every five, ten minutes, you observe the length of the shadow. You make an indication till at the time, the lowest point, and it starts increasing, 
then the time when it is making that threshold, when it is turning from decrease to increase, that is the sawat. You know the sawat. Then from there, you can, you can know the, uh, that is the beginning of October. By the time you are, uh, the length of the shadow is equal to your own height, the length of the shadow at the time of Sabbath. Otherwise, you will include the, what is called the Zillul Zawad, Zillul Zawad, the shadow of Zawad, which will make your calculation inaccurate. Another alternative method for you to know the end of the time of Zuhur, which they mentioned, is when you take into consideration the Zillul Zawad, the Zillul Zawad, that is the length of the shadow at the zenith, then you start looking at the shadow and calculating the length till uh, you look at the direction of the shadow where it is moving, maybe it is southeast like this, then you take steps, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half of your steps, one another, like this, they say that is equal to your height. But this, I'm trying to inform you what our scholars have done. Now you know you can easily do that because you have meters and so on. But at that time, they didn't have inches and centimeters, zero and so on that are using, they are only approximate. So part of the approximate measure is that if you are able to count six and a half steps, and the shadow, in addition to the shadow, of, uh, uh, and the shadow, the length of the shadow, after the shadow at zenith, equal to six and a half, then that is the end of the time of October. Because that is your shadow is equal to your height. Another method which they mentioned, without necessarily going to look at the sun, and without necessarily taking, uh, uh, making calculations or making measurements, they say you fold your hand like this and you put it here underneath your chin with the, the small finger touching the hole of your throat here, like this, and then you stay and face the sun. If you can see, if you can see the top edge of the sun, if you can see the top edge of the sun, by uh, just by at the same level as your eyes, then that is equal to one half. That is equal to your height. You understand? So all these methods they were using them, and they were also using a method of, uh, as I said, using sex, uh, dividing uh, like a, a, a kind of a sextant, which will measure the angle. And based on that, they establish the times of prayer. So establishing the times of prayer has been the business of the Muslims. And when you read the books, especially Al, uh, 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 Al Mughni, he mentioned it. Al Mughni of Ibn Qudama, he mentioned some of the various methods that are used. And also Al Qarati in his book, Al Zafira, he mentioned it. So it is based on this that the ulama. Uh, okay, this is one. The second one is the time of Isha. The time of Isha, the time of public is not a problem because the sunset can be seen visibly by the naked eye. But the time of Isha, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, when the al ashafa is appeared, and they, they are, they are, there are differences on the definition of ashafa. Ashafa is it the redness on the horizon, in the western horizon, or is it? the remnants of brightness in the Western horizon. According to Malikia, and this is the, the statement of Sayyidina Umar, the shepherd is the redness in the Western horizon. And normally it appears when the sun is 15 degrees below the horizon. But the brightness in the horizon, it can remain for longer than that. Normally, 
when the sun tilts below the horizon by about 18, 18 degrees, according to the calculations that they are making. Based on this, the method of calculation in terms of timing, especially for Malaysia, they differ. As for Fajr, we know that for Fajr, the Prophet وسلم, said to us clearly, he said, The Fajr is not the one that, that goes from bottom to top. Because uh, during the last part of the night, you see a kind of brightness. This you will never see in the city. But when you are traveling early in the morning, before Fajr, well before Fajr, like when you go out around 4 a.m., when they are at least about one and a half hours before Fajr, before the real Fajr, you start observing, you will see it. It's a kind of brightness that comes up. It is disconnected. It doesn't reach to the bottom, to the horizon. It's in the middle of the sky. You will see it up. And it's not a wide spread. It is just top. And that is what the ulama call al fajr al kadi the fall dawn. But the real fajr is the one that goes like this spread. That is, it starts from left to right, from north to east, and it comes up slowly, slowly, starting from the bottom, from the deep, from the horizon itself. That is the real fajr. Now that fajr also specifying what time it is, it can be calculated. At what level should the sun be for that budget to appear, you can arrive at it based on calculation. And the differences that exist between the calculation methods, they are based on what is the method that is being used. Let me mention to you some of them in this article written by one of our brothers. The Egyptian General Authority of Survey, they fixed it at 19.5 degrees. So they are timing for Fajr for each location is when the sun is at 19.5 degrees below the horizon. Umm al of Saudi Arabia is 19 degrees. University of Islamic Science is Karachi and the Muslim world lead calculation method is 18 degrees. And many Islamic organizations in the West, in Europe and America, they use 15 degrees. So based on this, you can observe differences between the calendar timings of different organizations. What is the best way for you to establish the accurate timing? It is mostly approximate, but observation can establish the accuracy or lack of accuracy of the prayer time. And normally when you make the observation, you will find that for most of the locations, the difference is normally plus or minus four to five minutes. Plus or minus four to five minutes. Usually they don't go beyond that. So based on uh, uh, the, 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 the time for the one is not much of a problem, but there is one factor which we should take in, into consideration, which is that the position, the location, the latitude and longitude, especially the latitude, it has its own impact because when the sun, when the sun is directly overhead, the time it takes 
for Fajr to appear may not be the, uh, uh, the time between the appearance of Fajr and the appearance of sunset may not be the same than when the sun is farther away from you like in the, you are in the north and the sun, the sun is in the southern horizon or the opposite, you are in the south and the sun is in the northern horizon. So now, uh, what is the confusion regarding using calculation methods? The confusion regarding using calculation methods is not because calculation methods are not permitted. They are permitted. They are permissible, but sometimes they can be inaccurate. And normally, uh, from uh, I have not done extensive study on this, but from experience, the difference of four to five minutes is normally the allowable difference that is acceptable. As regards the sighting of the moon, we don't have a problem so long as we are accurate in following the dates throughout the year as we are doing now. Every year, every month, the Moon Sighting Committee, they ask people to search for the moon. And they send their reports, and when the moon is sighted and it is established, they give report to the Sultanate and the day is next. This has reduced a lot of differences of and it's all done because people are actually searching for them. Because our problem used to be that people have no business with the moon, but when the time for Ramadan comes, they will go and declare that they have seen it. The moment they say, search for the moon, they will make sure that they get it. Once they say search for the moon, they will make sure they are extracted. Somebody will even, some, somebody, some people even regard it as a kind of miracle, as a kind of haram for him to sight the moon. Like uh, two years ago, somebody came to the, uh, uh, in front of the Emir of Karo to say that he had seen the moon. And when he was asked, how did you see the moon? He said, immediately I said, assalamu alaikum, from the prayer of Maghrib. Then my eyesight fell on the window and there was one. Immediately I said, assalamu alaikum. And that was how he saw the moon. He was inside the mosque. And from saying assalamu alaikum, he saw the moon through the window. And this was on the 29th. The moon is very tiny. So this has to reduce a lot. Because every month uh, on the 29th, the National Moon Sighting Committee will send message to its members and to all that have got uh, any uh, uh, that are serious about looking about sighting the moon, they will send messages for them to look for the moon. And from calculation, they will calculate, they will say the sun is going to set in, such, uh, in Abuja at such and such a time, and the moon is going to set at such and such a time. So the time, the difference of time between the, the uh, setting of the sun and the setting of the moon minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, like that. Normally, whenever it is like 20 minutes and below, it's hard for the moon to be seen, even if there is no cloud on the horizon, because it is too near the sun for it to be seen. But this thing has, this practice has reduced the amount of differences that uh, we've been getting. Uh, But I think there are some people who maybe when they make an observation of discrepancy between the observed time and the time that is mentioned in the calendar, they declare that using calculation is all wrong. But they have not uh, examined their own observation to find out. How did they make it based on their observation? Is it based on only one day observation 
what we did for all the days of the year. Most of these calculations that you see, they have been made from records in different places generated by the computer over a long period of time till they are a pattern. And this is what al Imam Karati says that once you find a pattern, you have absolute confidence in the veracity, in the truthfulness of what you have arrived at. Because Allah, by his wisdom, he has made this motion of the sun and the moon to be on a, on a calculated path. So if you are able to assemble the calculation for a long period, till it becomes a standard, then you are certain that this he said it's just like when you see an old man, you know that he was not born like that. He was born as a baby and you grew up to become old. Isn't it? Because you have never seen where a man was born like an, in his old age. Nowhere. Even though your internet will say it's possible. It's possible for somebody to be born and you will be old with grey hair and everything. But because you have never seen it, by custom, you have never seen it, it becomes a standard, it becomes a rule, a law. So just the same, when you assemble observation for a long period of time and you see it never changing, you are certain that it will never change. Because for instance, the length of day and night never changes. The length of day and night today, 19th March, will be the same length of day and night here in Gori, 19th March 2018. And it will be the same, 19th March 2016, 2015, like that. It will never change. The same with every other place. Now based on that, definitely then, the time for Zawar in a specific place, on a specific day of the year, if it is established, Come that day again, the next year, it will be the same. It will not change. This is natural. This is the way Allah has set this creation. Therefore, the important thing is to make sure that you are doing the measurement right before objecting to the calculation methods that are used by different organizations. And since uh, the, it is allowed to do taklif in this. It is allowed to follow those who know. If uh, the Mu'addin, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا سَمِئْتُمُ إِذَا إِنَّ بِلَالَ يُؤَذِّنُ بِلَيْهِ فَقُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يُؤَذِّنَ كُنُّهُمْ مِمَكْتُوا Ila, he calls the prayer in the night. Then eat and drink till Ibn Ummi Maktoum makes that sign. So he didn't say till you see the fajr. He said till Ibn Ummi Maktoum makes the adhan. Ibn Ummi Maktoum, he makes the adhan when it is told to him that it is fajr. So it is allowed to make that leave. To follow what the Mu'addinun are doing. That's why in Medina, for instance, uh, I had wanted to check the procedure that is followed by the Sheikh Al-Mu'addin and I was telling uh, 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 Amir, uh, Engineer Suleiman, that I wanted to check the procedure followed by the Mu'addin of Medina. But I didn't have time to check it because it's very wonderful the way they do it. They are not following any of the standard calculation methods of Umur Quran or elsewhere. They have their own calculation method and usually they release it uh, during the month of Ramadan, a few days before, a week before Ramadan, they say that these are the Ramadan time. And they distribute it in the mosque, and you can see. And they use both timing, the Gurudi and the uh, Zawali. The Zawali, uh, the Zenith time is the one that sets uh, 12 o'clock at midday. But the, the but the Gurudi, they set 12 o'clock at the time of sunset. So sunset is 12 o'clock, according to their own watch. And they make the calculation based on that. 
not using the uh, the midday at the zenith because the midday can be different. It cannot be, it may be 12, it may not be 12. But once they set uh, the sunset at 12, sunset is always 12 as far as they are concerned. So by the time the sun comes back to set, it is still 12 o'clock. Because the 360 degrees would have turned. There cannot be more than 24 hours in a day. But I did not have the chance to follow and see their calculation method. But at least we know from this that uh, the Muslims have been using this different this calculation method, uh, especially in this modern age, where it is difficult for you to know the timing of prayer, especially the time of Fajr and the time of Isha, in situation where people are living in the city. How can you see Fajr when you are living in the city? There is light everywhere. You will only be able to see Fajr after the Fajr has appeared for several minutes, or like maybe 30 or 40 minutes. That's when you will start seeing the light of Fajr. But immediately at the time of Fajr, for you to see it, you can't see it. I've seen the Fajr several times when traveling early in the morning, and you can see the way it appears, right from the beginning, the way it appears, as though a blanket is being pulled and light is appearing. So these are the methods that I use and establishing prayer timing. There is nothing wrong in doing Shakti. You can follow a calendar, uh, you can follow any of the calculation methods that I use, especially the ones agreed by the Makkah of Malik, which are the ones that are used by uh, Umbul Qura, uh, the Maliki Makkah, and the Hanbali Makkah, they are almost the same. Only difference is at the time of Isha. Umbul Qura, they regard the time of Isha as one and a half hours after the time of Fajr. They just make it standard. But in Ramadan, they, they set it as two hours after the time of Maghrib to allow people extra time to go back home and eat and eat and eat, then come back for Isha prayer. So this is just convention, putting it the time of Isha as one and a half hours after after Madri, after sunset is convention. It's not uh, saying that this is the beginning of the time of Isha. But the beginning of the time of Isha is normally less than one hour after sunset. It's less than one hour after Sometimes 50 minutes, sometimes 45, sometimes up to one hour. But putting it at one and a half hours, as the calendar of Umul Qura has done, is a convention. And as they say, Lam Shah is the Bismillah. There is no objection to any convention which you use, so long as the time of prayer, so long as you are praying in the time of prayer. Uh, so if you are in doubt regarding the times, just to be certain, Try to take time to go out and don't use high altitude because high altitude will make you, will, uh, uh, will definitely create differences. Because normally when they are doing the calculation, they are assuming a specific altitude. So if there is an alteration in the altitude, very high or very low, you may have certain differences. Look at the time when the first light of dawn appears. Also try the time for Zawar, try the time for sunset, uh, and then you will realize that uh, there is nothing significant in the differences that you observe between the time. When we were in the Sharia Commission in Kano, I was at one time the permanent commissioner of the Kano State Sharia Commission uh, from 2008, to, uh, from 2007 to 2010. During that time, uh, one of the uh, statutory duties of the commission was to draw up the Islamic calendar and it included the prayer timings. And the committee used to rely on people who were experts in this astronomical calculation. Uh, and there were three at that time. There was uh, Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly, well known, is dead now, and his children, they are doing it. Is a well-known uh, astrono uh, astronomical uh, 
uh, expert in terms of the translation. There was Ibrahim, there is Ibrahim the Pelagi, he's still alive, and there is Sheikh Ismail Khalifa, he's still alive. These three, they make the calculation. When they made the calculations, uh, and when we are prepared, when they were preparing the calendar, I made, uh, I generated the again. When he came back, he said, yes, we made mistakes. We were mistaken, and what was stated in the computer model was more accurate, and they adjusted it. And that is why now, during certain times of the year, like uh, about a month ago, uh, after prayer, we, if most, in most mosques in Cairo, they pray after prayer at 4 a.m. at 4 p.m. But in the month of, from the month of December, the month of uh, February, and beginning of March actually, also, we adjust the time to be praying at 10 minutes past 4. Because at that time, the timing for after prayer is after 4. And uh, the calculations, they made this adjustment because sometimes, you know, because they are using, uh, uh, they are using their own calculation using their hands. And they are not using instruments. But here, because these are, uh, these are models that could be simulated, you can simulate the whole movement of the sun with the globe and you can identify the time at every place, and the computer can do it, and it will just generate it. Once you make the correct formula and the correct simulation. And uh, because of that, and based on what Al Arabi has said, in my opinion, it's not a big deal regarding this timing of prayer, and uh, there is nothing wrong in doing it. Uh, I don't know the nature of the problem. I don't know also the basis uh, I was asked that there's a lot of try to find out. I just said I would just make my own presentation based on what I am able to gather. And this is uh, what I'm able to say. I hope I have been able to share something that is useful and that will contribute in bringing together uh, a uniform understanding over the matter, inshallah. SubhanAllah, Muhammad, inshallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khairan, uh, Dr. We are very grateful for this presentation. Uh, Inshallah, this is the end of the session, at the end of the lecture, and uh, we are going straight to questions and answers. It's almost uh, 4 o'clock. Yes, okay. It's it, uh, 4 o'clock. Okay, we are prayed already. Uh, so let's go to questions and answers. Yeah, let us Ali, number one. Let the upper number two. Let you Fatama to number three. Okay, let you Mohajir number four. Okay, let you businessman number five. <laughs> so let's have a let us Ali. The sister, Sister Ray, the questions. Alhamdulillah, uh, thank you very much, sir. You, though you did not know the gravity of the problem, but the problem, as you just stated, that was exactly how it was. The idea was in Asr prayer, not other prayers. Mostly the time is for Asr, here in Mori, especially in those months you mentioned, as though you were there. December down to February, ending March, and um, our projection then was uh, should be the middle of March. That is when we will have a refresh. That is when, uh, from the middle of March, that is when we will expect that Salat al-Asr should be around 4. But anything before that time, all our software shows 4, 12 above. Any prayer of Asr in worry and its environment that is less than 4, 12 above, you will be praying while the software will start calling the prayer. So that discomfort will come in. And so for that reason, we had a case with uh, one of our sessions, which is Aqtar al-Musalim. And in Aqtar al-Musalim, he was talking that even for calling for the prayer, it is not done if the time is not due. 
I thought for that reason we were talking that somebody raised the issue. That why are we praying for, especially in our school here in Ethiopia? And why do we say we are praying for, even though we have mentioned that even the call is supposed to be on the time before the salah starts? So they said that we are putting into consideration the student going back to school, I mean, class. Some of them, their lecturers may ask them out and so on. So we said that in that case, the student should be given another fatwa, but not allowing them or them to drag us into praying for time. That was the main issue. And that is exactly where we are from now. The idea is uh, two school of thought sprang up. One says we are going to leave the use of the calendar, and then we will use the use of uh, calculation by hand, as you mentioned, the likes of those brothers. But what we objected to is the fact that those people who developed the software must have been on a particular basis. Because if there is no basis for it, they shouldn't have done it. And they must have a particular knowledge which we don't have, a skill which they don't have, and you just mentioned that. And those calculations were not just as easy as we are thinking by putting something and then uh, measuring it. Because if that is the case, then there shouldn't be I mean, consensus between software. And if everybody is doing what you like, then there shouldn't be consensus between software. But most of the software, as you mentioned, two, three minutes. But then when you calculate by yourself, you see 20 minutes difference. So we are not comfortable with that, so we felt that you should put, shed more light on that. Thank you, sir. Shadow calculation, as you have said, that is done using the, uh, the earlier time or the software. Which one is more authentic? That's number one. Number two, this is a delta area. When the rainy season comes, it can rain for about six hours mm -hmm. at a stretch. And you can't see the sun? Yes, you cannot see the sun. Now, even though my question is a bit on Friday, when we are, we are about to start and the rain starts falling heavily, are we allowed to combine our prayers with Asr? Because one of the uh, reasons for combining prayer is that heavy rainfall. And it, it used to happen often. Can we combine with Asr? My question is not regarding to this event of the former topic. Uh, the issue of the female, I still want to come back. Now, when you ask a male and female in your children, that I want to tell us the best way to treat them. You know how that mind whether this is female or this male, because some of us, we think, we believe that when the female goes, the boys will remain in the house. So it is that to pay more attention to the boys. Because I see a situation whereby one of the prominent men in this data, when the guy, the person of a few days ago, it happened that the daughter married the former governor of an agency. For seven days, what is happening we were closed down. And nobody knew whether a few days ago had a uh, male. The bad doctor, the name ring bear that the, the daughter buried his father in the woman because the husband was the governor. So basically, what best way we treat our female children in regard irrespective of who is the mother. Maybe if the mother will be your tribe or will be another tribe. So what we do so that we not offend other that much.
Atlanta, we want to increase the more in Norway. Especially the different methods that you brought in measurement. What I got new from you is this one has not to do with how you put hand here and whether you can see straight to the, uh, the, the tip of the sun. Yeah, because um, if you are looking at the, the, the motion of the sun, calculating time, you have to really also buy the knowledge of the astronomer, which you cannot need out. And I'm happy that you also mentioned some of those things. Because the Zenith, the Zenith is, is based from different uh, uh, geographical positions. Irrespective of where you are, but what what the astronomers are doing, you know, each on especially this environment is around where you have your belly, where your shadow will be buried down and uh, up when it's not there. But outside that, I just want to commend your effort on this enlightenment. My question for stop. Must we pray rigidly and say one p.m. we pray, two p.m. we pray, so? Just give an example. Maybe in our own machine, we said 1 p.m. to pray to. 2 p.m., maybe another machine join my machine. And we don't really it all through the year, that's how we pray. Second question Is it also sooner that we should write a kind, a kind of pop, make it a public, pop, publicate it in the, in the time of uh, the weather notice board as we have? Place the time in the, the manjil. Is it part of the sunnah practice that we should write that? So, do who are done in this time, the comma is that time. As well, you know, from, we keep writing like that. So, is that method sunnah or we, the, 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 the muadil announce, you know, instead of writing now? Because definitely time also changes as the, as the new moon is born. Sometimes people watch it and slowly slide different. You know, as you go into the uh, new month, uh, actually they are always very close. Also, the Muadin will stand up and announce that they shall allow the other uh, changes in time instead of writing it. So, which one is more agree with the Sunna? So that will not be misled. Shukran. So, how are you? Let me answer the question now. The, all, all that is in the methods. If you are able to, the problem with using the shadow is. Uh, can use it because you are confident and those who also agree and feel that they trust you, they can follow you in that. But somebody may feel that he's more confident in what is established and accepted globally than what an individual can do. And when you are dealing with different people, it is better you go towards consensus than something which Right now, for instance, there is, uh, there is a strong uh, argument going on in, a work, in the work of group of the National Moon Sighting Forum. Okay. Somebody in Ibada, he said he had made observations that the timing, according to the calendar, is wrong from his own observation of sunrise, zenith, and whatnot. And he came up with the times that he said. And if you see the type of questions that have been asked, that this is only an observation for one day. We want a record. What are, the, what are your observations for all the days of the year? How many days have you done? We want a record of the latitude. What is the position? And what is the altitude of the position also above sea level? Because they all, they should all be taken into consideration when making the calculation, before you are sure that your calculation is, uh, 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 is more accurate than what the computer gives. So in such a situation, uh, I have never personally from all the, from what I, I don't claim an encyclopedic knowledge of all the fatwa of Ulama, but I have never come across a fatwa that is saying don't use the prayer timing as expressed by the different calculation methods. I've never had an objection regarding this. And this is uh, based on data. This is based on experience. Uh, and it is better for you to go for something over which there is a consensus than to come up with something which 
only a tiny major, a tiny minority will accept, and the others they will all be in doubt. Because ultimately, if you are doing the, sh the shadow, it is something which a number of people will come and do, and they will declare that this is how we do it. Uh, so this is something which you should look into. Regarding the second question, prayer, the Friday prayer, and combining it with us during rain. Yeah, this is permissible, and it is the opinion. Uh, the only people that objected are the Shafi. The Shafi is, they say, you can't join Duhur, you can't join Jum'a with Asr, because Jum'a is not actually so. But uh, the other schools, they accept that you can join Jum'a with Asr, because Jum'a stands for Duhur. And rainfall and rain is one of the, one of the excuses for joining Abridu 
when it is, when, when it is intensely hot, you should delay it off until when it is cool, uh, when it is cooler. And uh, during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said they should increase it by Rub al Kama. Rub al Kama, that is one quarter of the length of your shadow. That is the standard practice. During the time of Umar, he said this is the time. And he wrote letters, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and the rest of the Sahaba, who were his governors in different districts, that these are the times of prayer. And that was convention. And even the way they do it in Saudi Arabia, where they make the time of Isha one and a half hours after sunset, is convention. There is nothing wrong in doing that. And the same with displaying prayer time. Displaying prayer time is maslaha. You cannot talk of sunnah or lack of sunnah there, because fundamentally it is permissible. And if it is done for maslaha, it is good, it is mustahab. What is the maslaha there? Because we are in a time when people Usually they are always planning their life. And it is good you, t you let somebody tie his schedule, his daily activity, to the time of prayer. If he doesn't know and he wants to schedule some meeting, he, want to, he wants to schedule some visits, he doesn't know the time. And you know we are, in the, we are in the time where everything is tied to our watches. We are always looking at our watches. Everywhere you have watches. In the car you have a watch. You are born you have a watch. At your hand you have a clock. Inside the glass you have a watch, inside the office you have. So we are tied to this time of hours and seconds. And if our prayer times are known to us, we will, uh, we will arrange our activity, our calendar of daily activities to follow that time of schedule. And this is good. Isn't it good for somebody to know what is the time of prayer so that when he's going to have a meeting, he will schedule, he will schedule the meeting in such a way that you will be able to come and meet the Zubur prayer in congregation. And you know we are in the time where uh, the Adhan will be called and you wouldn't even know, especially in an area like this, where it's not even where you can do the Adhan in big, big loudspeakers, or in an area like, uh, uh, in predominantly Muslim areas, where when it's time for prayer, everywhere you hear the call for prayer. Here it's different. It's just like in the Western counties in England, in Australia and so on, you always have to be carrying with you a calendar in your pocket. This calendar in your pocket it shows the prayer time and the location of mosque. Because you can't even see a mosque. So that when it is time for prayer, you divert and you look at the map, which is the nearest mosque to you, and you go and pray. Do you say this is sunnah or this is not sunnah? This is maslah. You do it for the sake of prayer. So there is nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we allow before the beginning of the next lecture, we will take the questions. Why do you still insist you can see Mother before you go to him? Uh, it is for him to take him back. Please, let us be patient with this arrangement. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, Doctor, uh, we, before we give the other Teacher of Muslim Community and the IPC to mind to give all the words of thanks. The next lecture is going to take place between Maghrib and the Shah at the Posadis of the estate, that is the Ali estate. The topic is Youth Empowerment, Islamic Solutions to Socioeconomic Crisis. We are all invited between Maghrib and the Shah at Posadis of the estate along the afternoon. Uh, along the Saturday road tonight. Inshallah, let me call on the Amir ICC and the Peter Muslim community to give us the most of thanks. We press him and grateful to him. We seek his help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah for the behaviors of our souls and the consequences of our misconduct. Whoever Allah guides has no one to misguide him. And whoever he left on guiding will have no one to guide him. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. And Muhammad, may peace and bless of Allah be open him. He's a servant of Allah and a messenger for him. After this, the best of tricks is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
the world of Hebrews are inventions and religion. All inventions and religion are innovations. All innovations are misguidance, and all misguidance are in the helper. We are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it possible for us to be here to witness this planned occasion. And we hope that the light by our has been well understood and will equally be applied. And we also thank the organizers of this event. And we also hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy will continue to reward them and give them the ability to see more of this. Anything that is bothering the Ummah, we can get a clearance from time to time so that we don't remain an island to ourselves. We also uh, thank our mothers for having the courage and the ability to grace the occasion despite the harshness of the topic. I knew the topic has actually scared many of them from coming around. You can pass the message to those who have not been here that the message was positive and is meant to actually give a balanced freedom to all parties, like both men and females, as well as the family in general. So we pray to Allah to take us back to our homes separately. And may He reward us for what we have actually uh, planted today. May it be a source of benefit for us in the hereafter. May He continue to guide and protect us wherever we may be. May He enrich us in knowledge and give us the ability to practice what Akhri Dawana and Alhamdulillah.